Hi, and welcome to our tour. Most of the details of our system are fairly intuitive, and for those things that aren't, it's easy enough to learn. So we won't spend too much time here on every little detail, but instead we'll focus on the overview. Most likely you found our site by typing pool service software into Google, or something like that. And if that's true, you're probably a swimming pool service looking for software to run your business, right? Well, what did you find, besides us? When we've performed this kind of search and evaluated the options, mostly we have found either off-the-shelf accounting and invoicing systems like QuickBooks or QuickBooks add-ons for pool services, or we find very high-end field service industry packages that you can adopt to your own pool service business. But because these kinds of systems are not specifically designed for pool services, you would need to spend the time and effort figuring out how to make them work with your business. If you're good with computers and you have the time to figure things out, then these may be a good option for you. And these field service industry packages can be very sharp, with GPS tracking of all the trucks in your service fleet and handheld devices for each tech where they can enter service activities on site so that an invoice can be sent to the customer even before the tech leaves the site. But if you're not very good with computers, or you don't really have the time or desire to figure out how to make one of these other systems work for you, or if you don't have a service fleet of 100 trucks and customers wanting invoices two minutes after the service is complete, or if you don't have ten or twenty thousand dollars in cash laying around to pay for some of these slick GPS handheld systems, then our system is probably exactly what you're looking for. Our system was developed by a former pool service tech. That's me, and only for pool services. On the face of it, there's little fanfare and little to learn. In this tour, we'll show you how easy it is and how things fit together. We've already created a fictitious pool service with some sample data to help with our demonstration here. And this is what you would see after you've signed up for our service and logged in. To use our system, you would first need to enter some information about your pool service, your customers, your employees, and your catalog. That's the list of chemicals, supplies, parts, and services you provide, and their prices. First, we'll look at the pool service information screen. That is found here. Here, you enter the basic information about your pool service. And down here, we have partnered with Processing Point, a payment processing and merchant services company. And if you become a Processing Point merchant, you'll be able to automatically bill your customers credit cards through our system. In order to become a Processing Point merchant, you would click here and fill out this form, and a Processing Point representative would contact you to help you through the application process. Once you become a Processing Point merchant, you will be provided with a merchant key and a merchant ID, which you would enter here. Down here, you can upload a graphic that will appear on the header of your customer's bills. And here, you can enter a short message that will appear below that banner for things like announcements, reminders, or specials. Next, we'll take a quick look at the customer screen. Here, you enter the information about your customers and their pools. Here at the top, you enter the basic billing information about the customer. If you're a processing point merchant and the customer wants his or her credit card charged automatically for your services, you enter their credit card information here. And down here, you enter information about the customer's pools. Our system accommodates multiple pools per customer, which is helpful in cases where an apartment complex with multiple pools may want one bill. These fields here drive the billing and scheduling processes. And our system also accommodates setting up customers on a chemicals included basis. And that is done up here. No customer with this box checked will ever see any chemical items on their invoice. Down here, you enter the amount you charge each customer per month to service this pool. And this is the amount you pay your cleaner, or yourself, if you're just a one-person shop. The cleaner pay field is used to calculate profitability, a feature that you can read more about online. The rest of these fields are for information only. Next, we'll look at our employees screen. That can be found on the menu here. And we're going to go ahead and select George, because we have good information set up on him to demonstrate things. Here you enter information about your cleaners, or just yourself if you happen to be a one-person operation. Don't get too hung up on the title, employees. This is just a screen where you enter information about all of your cleaners, whether your pool service is made up of only one person, or if it also has subcontractors, regular employees, or both. Anyone who services your pool should be entered here. 
Up here you enter basic information about the employee. Note that the employee's email address is the login ID and this is their password. And this authorization levels drop down list is very important, but we'll come back to that in just a moment. Down here you can assign pools to the cleaner. The labeling explains everything, so in this example we're looking at George. And the list on the left are those pools assigned to George, and those list on the right are those pools that are not assigned to George. The list on the right also shows who is assigned to the pool already, if it is already assigned. And to assign a pool to George, you simply click on the item in the right list, like this, and then click the little left arrow button there, and we're not going to do this for real, but if we clicked that, that would unassign that pool from G Jerry and assign it to George. Our system also allows you to assign levels to one of two different authorization levels. We can see that drop-down list here. There is a third authorization level called Owner, which is automatically assigned to the person who first clicked Get Started and filled in the sign-up screen to set the pool service up in our system. Owners and managers can do just about anything in the system. They can assign and unassign cleaners to pools. They can enter and edit customers, pools, catalog items, and other employees. They can create and send bills and so on. Employee level users can only view and edit limited information. For example, we have George here set up with an employee level authorization. And if we log out and log back in as George, we can see what a tech with an employee authorization level sees. So we will log out by scrolling up a little. Log out. And this is what George would see. When he logs in, he doesn't see the long menu that you saw just a moment ago. He sees pool service information, pools, employees, enter service reports, and a blank service report form option. But when he looks at these things, he doesn't even on those screens see what a manager would see if they were logged in. On the pool service information screen, he can see it, but he can't edit anything. And not all of the values that a manager sees are visible to him. No sales tax rate, no merchant ID or merchant key, no bill header, no bill message, and so on. He can see the pools screen, but only for the pools assigned to him, and he can't edit them. So if we look at that, you see the Save Changes button here is disabled. You don't see how much you charge the customer, you only see the cleaner pay. So he can view all of this, but he can't edit anything and save the changes. He can view the employee screen but only for his own record. You can see how the drop-down list is disabled and he's the only one selected. So he can edit his own information, but you'll note that the pool assignment feature is not visible, so he can't assign and unassign pools to himself. And most importantly that he can see, at the bottom of this screen here, he can print out a route sheet. So for this day, you can see on Mondays he does Royal Oaks, Royal Oaks Back, Cedars Spa, Gables Valley Ranch North, Gables Valley Ranch Office, and so forth. Well, if he does this, it will display this sheet where there is a blank form displayed for each pool that he's scheduled to clean on that day that he can fill that in while he's out on his route so that he can come back later in the day and enter this information into the system. Here he would just go print, file print, uh, and that would send it to his printer. We are not going to do that here. Well, now coming back, when he comes home from a day on the road, he would come to this screen here, break out his written forms that he wrote on all day long, and enter them in this system. So he would pick a pool that he cleaned on this day, whichever one it was. Then he would put the date that he cleaned it, enter the readings that he took, services he performed, and then the chemicals and supplies that he entered. These drop-down lists are driven by the catalog screen, which we will do discuss in just a moment. But when the cleaner adds chemicals, parts, supplies, and so on to the pools and records that data here, it becomes part of that customer's bill. Hold tight. Even if chemicals are entered in this screen, they won't show up on a chemicals included customer's bill. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Anyway, let's log George out and log back in as a manager to continue our tour. And we're back to our main screen. So we've covered the pool service information, the customers, and the employees. In order for the system to work correctly, however, there's one more thing that you're going to need, and that's the catalog. And that can be found here. As you can see, the catalog screen is really pretty simple, except for maybe this. 
Remember how we mentioned that we allow you to set up customers as chemicals included? Well, in the catalog screen, any item that you check here as an included chem will never appear on the bill for a customer marked as a chemicals included customer. But even if all of your customers are chemicals included customer, you still should try to enter chemical items in your catalog and have your service people record their usage at the, each pool so that you can track profitability. We have, added, we have also added a few things to our sample catalog to demonstrate how it can be used. For instance, if a customer is a chemicals included customer, then he or she would never expect to see trichlor tabs or so sodium bicarb on an invoice. But if they needed a new pump motor, that would certainly not be covered by the customer's normal monthly service charge. And most pool services would not consider the service of installing the new pump motor as covered by the normal monthly service charge. So we have repair service also listed as a catalog item along with the pump. All that information, pool service information, customers, employees, and catalog, is basically static. And once it's all entered correctly, you're ready to see how this can really help you. The way it's designed to work is that each cleaner, even if there's only one, enters their service data each time they service a pool. They do that on that Enter Service Reports screen, as we saw just a moment ago. This screen adds billable items to the customer record until a bill is created. And back on the Pool Service Information screen, you may remember seeing a default bill date right here. On that date, every month, the service charges are also thrown into that accumulation. Then, whenever you're ready, you go here to the bill approval screen. Every customer that has billable items for which they have not yet been billed appears in this drop-down list here. You select one, or just deal with the active one at any time, like here we have the Cedars Apartments listed first. Here we see every bill item ever done at Cedars that has not already been billed. A manager can look through this list to check for errors, like maybe Jerry fat-fingered an entry and said he put 222 pounds of trichlor tabs in a pool instead of just 2 pounds. You can correct that here by just ed editing the incorrect values. Or maybe some items needed to be removed from the bill. For each item that you want to approve, you check the Approve box after editing if, if needed. And for each item that you want to remove, you check the Delete box and then you click the finalize bill button up here and when you do that every item marked delete is deleted every item marked approved is added to that current bill and any item that was neither marked approved or delete remains in that pending list where it will continue to appear until you approve it or delete it and when you click finalize bill several other important things happen first you'll see a printable bill like this we're going, to, we're going to approve all of the items here. So we've checked all of them. We can check them all at once like that, but you could also check them one at a time if you wished. We're going to go ahead and click Finalize Bill. So Cedars Apartments will see a bill like this. Now this is your printable copy. Here's how that header graphic looks, and here's where that bill header text appears, and so on. And at this point, you can print this if you need to mail it or file it. The second thing that happens when you click Finalize Bill is that if you entered a billing email address for this customer in the customer screen, this bill would immediately be emailed to the customer and copied to you if you checked the CC Emailed Bills box on the Pool Service Information screen. Here's what that emailed bill would look like. And it has, of course, just like the printable bill, the header and the text message that go on the bill, then all the bill detail items, as you see below. The third thing that happens when you click Finalize Bill is that if you're a processing point merchant and this is a credit card paying customer, then his credit card was automatically charged for the amount of the bill. And finally, the last thing that happens when you click Finalize Bill is that an entry is added to the customer's account to reflect the additional amount of his balance. If this was a credit card paying customer, as this one is, and his card was successfully charged, then another record would also be added to his account to reflect the payment. Now let's go through this process for another customer for comparison. For this test, I'll select Twin Palms. So we're going to check them all. It takes a second. And then we're going to say Finalize Bill. So we click Finalize Bill, and that's the bill that you can print out and send to this customer. Now we want to pause for just a moment here and point something out. 
Note that this process seems to take maybe one minute per customer per month. If your pool service utilizes several employees or subcontractors, then we might guess that build time probably involves at least a few hours of collecting and collating hand-scribbled, water-smudged service report tickets and creating a bill manually. We think that this system is a huge improvement over that. There is only one other process we'd like to show you in this tour. The customer account screen. That can be found here. Here you can view a list of every client and their current balance. You can check or uncheck this box to opt to view only those customers with a non-zero balance or just all customers. In this case, let's look at all customers by unchecking that box. Let's look at this detail screen though for the, only for the two customers we just billed, Cedars and Twin Palms. So you see Cedars has a zero balance, so that's why they don't show up if that box is checked, because you don't care. They paid their bill, you're happy. But to view what's happened in their history, you can check the detail. And as you can see, there is a bill on April 26th for $299, and there was a payment on April 26th for $299. And that's because he's a credit card paying customer, and that credit card payment was added to his account the instant that the bill was created. We'll close that one and look at the other account. Here's Twin Palms, and they have a $418 balance, as we can see, but no payment. And that's because Twin Palms is not set up for credit card billing. And at some point in the future, when you receive a check from Twin Palms, you can come back to the screen, click on the manual en entry button, enter the transaction information. Let's say this is May 1st, 2009. We can put a note here, check number 2119 received on 4-30-2009. Just for whatever notes you want to add there, you say save. And now we have a record that his balance is zero, he has a check received on that date, whatever you typed in that box, and he has a zero balance. And we close, and we click refresh, and now we see that Twin Palms has a zero balance. Well, that concludes the tour of our system highlights, and there are many other details that we chose to leave out for the sake of time, but we hope you've seen enough here to want to sign up for our 30-day risk-free trial period so that you can explore further, and we look forward to seeing your sign-up notification soon.